Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Craig Hiking Pipes. And today, um, as I'm finishing up my Peterson University flake in my Rossi 8424, Canadian shape, you can see the oval shank there. Really smokes well, and it's one of my least expensive pipes. Just goes to show you that, you know, what folks say, you don't have to have the most expensive pipe to get the best smoke. Anyway, what this video VR is going to be for is going to be out to the relaxed piper. The relaxed piper has asked a fun question, I guess, and that is if we can only have seven briar that excludes cobs, meerschaums, or other material pipes, uh, what would they be? Basically our seven uh, desert island briar pipes. And I thought, you know what, might be fun to do that. So, you know, as part of this uh, VR, it's going to be a little bit long perhaps, so I apologize in advance. I decided that I'll just give an updated tour of my uh, pipe hovel that uh, exists in the garage. Uh, I smoke uh, a lot in the garage or out on the front porch, as you guys have seen, uh, during the summertime. But in the wintertime, I'll move my pipes inside as I've learned that uh, cold weather is really not uh, conducive to briar. So uh, with that, I'll flip this around and kind of, you know, give the... Uh, nickel, dime, quarter, tour, however you guys are going to define it. So with that, we're going to start over here and we'll raise this up just a little bit. I have this little gray shelving unit and this kind of houses uh, lighter fluid, as you can see, filters, lighters, uh, cleaners, waxes, you know, just the miscellaneous accessories that we all use uh, in our pipe world. Um, moving down, um, I will, well, you can see my Asiki and calendar there. One thing I'll say, um, I, when we get into it a little bit more, but this first rack of pipes that I have here, these, I don't really smoke very much. Uh, these are Uncle Howard pipes. And I had done a video uh, a few months back where my Uncle Howard has passed and he was one of the reasons I got into pipe smoking. And my aunt graciously offered me his pipe collection. And these five here are all Uncle Howard pipes. But um, with the exception of the Um Paul there, which is, a, which is smokable and I did a refurbishment on, I don't really care for the shape very much. But these other ones have uh, really damage to them that precludes them from being smoked. I was really bummed out about the one on the end. It's a clay pipe, and that was broken in shipping that I kind of glued back together. But it's not, uh, unfortunately, it's just not smokable. So as we get into the other pipes, and I'm going to kind of quickly pan into this, all these pipes all get equal amounts of love. Um, they're all regularly in my rotation. Um, so, you know, I am one of these people. I am not a hoarder. And if a pipe isn't getting smoked, if I don't like it for whatever reason, it's not my type, I will try to move that on to the best of my ability. But so with that, I'll just give a quick, uh, quick tour of the pipes that I currently have. So the four up top, those are Uncle Howard pipes that I do smoke. And again, all of them have been refurbished. Next to those four, the next one over is a Northern Briars. It's a Marty Shapiro estate pipe that I acquired through Mike at Briar Blues. The one with the bamboo shank, that is a Mastro Depetto Rustica pipe. Uh, smokes really great. Next to that is a J. Mouton Lovett. Uh, had that one commissioned. And then the four at the end are Fowen pipes and they're all nine millimeter. Moving back over, the one buried in the coffin corner, there is a bones pipe. I tend not to smoke that one that much. That is really left for, if I'm gonna do some yard work or I'm gonna go hiking, I'll, I'll break out that bones pipe uh, to do that, but it's not no, one I would normally sit back and relax smoke with. Next to that one is a Mastro, is a 
Mastro de Paja. Uh, next to that one is a Spanu. It's an olive wood with a cork overlay. Next to that one is the Winslow Crown 300. Then we move on to the commemorative Friday Savinelli uh, that I acquired through Eddie Gray at the Pipe Nook. Um, I can, can't thank him enough for coordinating that with uh, Savinelli and others. Next to that is my Punta Oro 628. And next to the Punta Oro are two autograph Savinelli's. And then going down is the, uh, I have four 320s, as you can see. That's the Marte, the Forester, the Eleganza, and the Toscana. This pipe over here is a Fogel's. It's a uh, kind of my uh, hobbit pipe, if you will. I don't have any other church wardens. And it's sitting in a Gandalf, uh, I don't know if you could see that through the mix there, but uh, it's sitting in a Gandalf top of the staff uh, type of thing, so I thought it was appropriate for that. Then I have this uh, Lazy Susan uh, type of uh, pipe display that spins around. And uh, these three here are all Asikian uh, pipes. Um, around here, I have the top two are two more Asikians, so yes, I have five Asikians. The one below that is a Nording double silver. Continuing around, up top is a Costello, and with two uh, Jack Ryan pipes below. One more spin around here, and I have a Kaviki and two Radiches. Down here is my only Meerschaum. This also was an Uncle Howard pipe. It was unsmoked when I got it, so it was pure white, and you can see I'm already getting some color into it. I predominantly smoke aromatics in it. It's not the uh, highest quality Meerschaum, but it's uh, it's fun to it's fun to uh, smoke, and it smokes it smokes okay. It's not a great smoker, but it smokes okay. And then I just have uh, the obligatory corn cob, a cheap corn cob because. I I succumbed to peer pressure and, you know, had to get a corn cob. And then this one here is also an Uncle Howard pipe that was never smoked. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's uh, purely decorative in my opinion. You can see it has a steel bit to it and uh, this beading. And I th I'm not sure the material of the bowl. It might be clay or what have you, but you can see it was unsmoked. And I'm not, I don't have really desire to try it. I tend to try most things, but I'm just going to leave that be. And again, that's remaining as a decorative pipe. And of course, I, you know, there's the Rossi. So continuing around with the uh, tour of a little bit, uh, my wife did that painting and uh, I think that's pretty nice. Um, I have over here, starting up top, I will, these are my more decorative or prestigious uh, pipe socks, if you will. You can see there's the five Asikian pipe socks handmade. Those are absolutely works of art. I, I, I couldn't just throw them in a drawer. They, they're too nice to not display. And then I have a Savinelli, a Nording, and a Radice pipe sock. And then going down below those, this is kind of my wall badge of honor, if you will, of... Uh, Tobaccos that I've tried, um, most of them I've liked, I have to admit. There's probably one or two that I don't really particularly care for, but, uh, you know, this is, you know, tobaccos that came with uh, in tins with lids. I just, you know, hang them on the wall. There's still a couple more that have to go up that I haven't, you know, done yet. And then um, down below is uh, this kind of uh, cart thing uh, up top houses 12 jars of tobacco that I will periodically dip into to supplement uh, the open tins that I have. You can see there's Orlick, there's Peterson, I have the London Burley, uh, Peter Stokeby's uh, Bullseye Flake in there. I have a McBaron Vanilla Cream. Uh, there are some aromatics like Eileen's Dream, Autumn Evening. Uh, I have a couple of custom aromatic blends that I made when I first started to pipe smoke, as well as uh, Scotty's Trout Stream. Then down below in these two shelves, these uh, are kind of tobaccos that are waiting in the wings to be brought out when I finish the uh, open tins. So that's really the rough tour of the uh, pipe hovel that I have here. 
And uh, with that, I'm going to take a quick pause. And uh, I'm going to pull out the seven pipes that I will consider my desert island pipes. So hold on for just a second and we'll return. Okay, so pulled out the uh, pulled out the seven, and we'll go into uh, a little more about each one of those. I know this is running a bit long, but uh, it is what it is. So, with that, I'm going to flip her around, and we'll take a look at my seven Briar Desert Island pipes. And here they be. So we'll start at the top. First one, Costello. This is a shape 30 or 31. Um, it's a uh, 4K. It's an older one. You can see, and the focus is not happening so great, but there's a diamond. There it is. There's a diamond on the shank, which means it's an older model. It was you. It was for the United States, but it is a, like I said, a 4K. It's an old antiquary. And the thing I found with this one was... Um, with a lot of the Costellos, the an old antiquary, uh, the blast on them was more of a generic. It didn't, uh, many of them don't have the grain coming through. This one, you could see that ring grain going around and it's absolutely beautiful. And I am a Costello believer now. This thing smokes, this is the best smoking pipe I have. Um, it, it's really a phenomenal smoking pipe. I get it. The next one is probably, whoops, let's get you back on here. Okay, the next one is my commissioned Asikian pipe. This is number 189. This is, to me, aesthetically my most beautiful pipe, as well as a great smoking pipe. There's a lot of appreciation here. First of all, I appreciate Nish, the avid piper, coordinating with the Levon Asikian to get me this. And this is all handmade. Everything from the petroglyph band that goes around to all of this carving and the, and the rustication. There was really no machinery used. This is all hand carved. And I like the variation of smooth and the rustication. And I just think it's an exquisitely designed pipe. And one of the things that's really not lost is all this carving, these panels, was all hand carved. And you can see that in that carving, it has the same rustication that's on the base and into the shank. Um, that was all hand done, and the, the meticulousness of the work was, is just something to be unbelievable. It's, it, it's just, I really, really appreciate this. And again, it smokes really wonderfully, and uh, yeah, definitely, uh, whoops, Costello keeps falling over. But, all right, I'll let you be. I'm going to put you on here and just leave you leaning. So, but yes, that's number two. Number three is this Radice Apple Rind. And this was a gift from my wife uh, last Christmas. I like, I really love the uh, tactile feel of the rustication of the rind. And it has this beautiful ebonite stem to it. Um, smokes absolutely wonderfully. Um, really enjoy smoking this one a lot. Number four is a Fallon, and I selected one of my Fallons. This is from the Kira series, and Kira in Sanskrit means ray of sunshine, and they're supposed to achieve that with this uh, kind of uh, contrasting uh, stain. The um, Sandblasting on this side is just, and around, is just absolutely beautiful to pick up the grain um, along the bottom. This thing, it's a bigger pipe, but uh, it's well balanced, and it, uh, again, like the others, uh, smokes great. Um, so, yeah, this is number four. Number five is one of my autographed Savinelli's. Um, wasn't sure I was going to be crazy about this pipe. It's kind of an odd shape. It's kind of an eight panel shape uh, with a square shank. You could see the autograph insignia. But the thing I got really attracted to was, again, this, this blast that the artisans from Savinelli put onto this. The, gr the grain all the way around is just beautiful to look at. And it turns out 
This thing is just a, an incredible smoker. It is comfortable. It's not as big as it looks. Um, I can really get my hand around it and touch fingers. So, but uh, yeah, it just, it smokes wonderfully. I was very impressed with this. So this is why it made its way um, into my seven. The, the, the aesthetic, the grain on there, as well as the smokeability, incredible. Okay, number six is going to be the commemorative Friday Savinelli. Have to, I have to keep this one. This is a special one in commemorative of uh, John Harding. And again, I appreciate the uh, work that Eddie Gray and others from the, put into this in coordinating with Savinelli. Plus, when this was purchased, everybody who purchased one of these limited editions, uh, part of the proceeds went to John's wife. So special pipe. And this one's going to stay. Plus, it smokes very well. And then the last one, I have to have an Uncle Howard pipe. And this is an Amorelli. And it's a apple shape or maybe even a ball. But it uh, smokes really great. The grain uh, on this pipe there is focusing better. You can see the grain is just incredible. It just radiates from the bottom and goes throughout the pipe, no no fillers or flaws. Uh, this was a great pipe. Uh, so glad to have this from my Uncle Howard. And then the thing about Amorelli is in the shank and in the stem, you have these 18 karat gold inlays. And I did the research and I was you know really surprised to find out they used real gold um, in these inlays and a high quality gold too, a high content gold. So smokes really well and um yeah very i'm very happy to have this so you know pulling back out this is the uh this of uh, the seven desert island pipes so again a shout out to the relaxed piper thanks for asking us to do this i think this was a a fun little thing i you know the you know, a few of these pipes were easy choices, but uh, the fact that I had said that I, I smoke all my pipes equally. Um, again, I don't keep pipes just to keep pipes. Um, you know, the the a few of them were really tough to get into that selection and discount to others. So, but again, fun little thing to do. So, again, I know this was a long video. I appreciate you guys staying uh tuned and uh, always, you know, tuning in. So with that for now, I will say be well, be safe, and most importantly, be good to one another. And we'll catch you again really soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye.